har to plasterboard a wall, a small wall, the tools we're gonna need. Tape, Stanley knife, got a new one, nice clean, clean blades, a rasp to tidy up some of them cuts and edges. And you're probably gonna need a hammer to denial any old nails or screws and a screw gun to screw the boards up and obviously the materials are going to need some plasterboard and some screws you'll also need a hop up guys to get to the top here so first things first I'm going to have to clean out any nails here this is an old wall so and clean this corner off and make sure that the board will sit nice and flat against the joists if you don't you can damage your board they can pop through the other edge so get your hop up or ladders at the ready and clean down all your corners preparation is key to every great job and every good job so you can see here I'm taking out all the old nails here that didn't come out and um, these old boards were being ripped off the timbers um, and like I said previously you don't want to leave them in it'll throw your board off level and make finishing an absolute nightmare and can bust bust the whole face of the board and just using the tipping hammer here to take off the excess edges as well just run the knife long guys to cut the scrim if you just want um, I didn't do it on the ceiling because I'm plastering the ceiling anyway and this gives me a chance to re-scrim that ceiling joint. I'll also re-scrim left and right walls as well as they're getting also re-skimmed with this wall. So scrim tape every joint that's going to be redone. It is better to pull out all the nails but obviously you've seen the head on that nail that sometimes the head will break off and you'll maybe not be able to get a great grip and for them ones that do happen that you can tap them in flush again um, but like I said it's definitely better to get all the nails out as when you come to re-screw no, no doubt you will hit one or two nails that have been banged on in and you'll have to re-position your screw which can be quite annoying so when I get all the, the nails and screws out, anything that's going to hinder the next board, the next thing I would do is mark all the joists. I'm just doing this with a Stanley knife here, just cutting lines in the ceiling. Like I said, the ceiling's getting plastered, but if you want to use a marker, crayon, bit of chalk or pencil, that's that's fine. Pencil will, will rub off after as well. Um, so after you get it all marked out, your joists, you want to brush the floor away guys and have it ready for your plasterboard to slip in um, you don't always want to have the plasterboard skin tight to the floor but if you got it nice and clean you know you're giving yourself half a chance to get the, the plasterboard in um, so after you have your joist mark you're going to want to measure up and for this board I just need to slice off the bottom here and just marked it very little needs to come off um, and the reason I want a full board here is this is where the shower is going to go. There is PVC to go on top of that again, but I still want a full sheet in behind so there's less joints. Um, will be harder work carrying up the stairs, but um, hopefully, you know, if, if you just have to do it, you maybe have another guy to help you carry the board. Um, and how you you measure it, mark it. So you measure your where it, where the sheet needs to go, and just you can make two marks and put a line between the two marks, and just slice it down freehand. Or you can still use a guide, hold your level up, and give it a slice. I always find these smaller cuts are a wee bit more difficult, as they're harder to snap. As you can see there, I had to use a wee bit of force to get it but the more you do the board the, the better you get of it this is a maybe a bit of a better angle to show you is how I actually cut the boards um, this one needs 
both cut slice off the bottom and one off the top and show you how I do it quickly. I have it in another video as well but I'll drop them in the links below. So I can just make my mark at the bottom here and it's probably half an inch to come off or smallish, smallish size to come off the bottom too. Always make sure your tape's nice and tight so you're getting a true, a true reading as well. If it bends or it's at an angle, you're getting a bit of a false reading and you could lose out on half an inch or so as well. So, you don't want to be doing that. So, like I say, here's the way I would just clamp a finger on whatever it is to come off. And you can just simply mark the plasterboard with the end of the, the tape. The wee bit that sticks out and the wee catch. And that's giving me just pulling it along here it's keeping it nice and margin and then I have a, a perfect line to slice along let's use this now I can just sort of make out my first mark still a wee bit hard to see there but basically then you can just trace along your line and once you've cut one side it's just a matter of snapping it and returning it. I'll show you that shortly here. Just doing this in the back of the van. One that's going to keep the driveway that bit cleaner. And two, if it rains, the plasterboard's still inside. So it's not too too bad. As you do not want your plasterboard getting damp. Keep it as dry as possible. It doesn't want to get damp, you put plaster on it. It takes a good steady hand. Like I said, you can use a a batten or a straight edge and you might also want to cut it run the knife along that twice but once you get one side of the paper cut it's just a matter of folding the plasterboard over you can see it snap there and then all you're going to do is fold it a bit, bit better I'm just doing this for the demo but you'll fold it over a bit better and give it a good slice mind your fingers on the other side as well but if you fold it and cut it along, it will come apart. Nice and clean. Bit hard to do that with one hand. You can cut it from this side, but it is a better job if you cut it from the back. And here's what the rasp is for. Just tidying up that rough edge. Smoothing off any big bits on it. And that will just allow the board to put up to another board or to the to the side walls or ceiling that bit tidier. You don't have to take much off. It's also handy if you're a wee bit big, a couple of mil big and it just won't fit in nice. You can always run the rasp across and get it down a wee bit. But you can see how it smooths that off nicely. So again, like I said earlier, just make sure, even now, give it a quick double check. There's no, nothing in the way is going to hinder you, and you don't want anything trapped behind the board or any tools or anything, like hammers or anything like that. You want to make sure the wall's clear and you're not going to lose any tools um, in the joists and there's no debris on the floor that's gonna also get in the way of the plasterboard so maybe somebody in the future might might come across the wee treasure in the wall um, good luck to them uh, it's too, too late until after you watch the video till you realize what's happened but next stage is screws at the ready, you can fill up your pockets or if you have a pouch, it's perfect. Get yourself set up, get some screws in the pocket, even enough to hold it. Um, walls are a lot easier to do than ceilings. Ceilings are, are real, real hard work. Um, and walls, walls at least you can lean it up against the wall. And here's here's one for you, just struggling to open the box and then when I actually get it open, Look what happens. Wonderful. So if I don't use all these screws in this job, the box is useless to me. 
um, must be making any boxes cheaper I don't know they used to be stronger than that so the board is just I've just cut it just slightly under so that it will definitely fit and so you're gonna want to prop it up as I'm plastering the ceiling on the wall here so I want to close that top joint and my left hand joint as tight as possible and that'll just make skimming that bit easier with you know you're not filling in a big big massive scrim joint and the way I'm doing that is just using the chisel um, can't find Miller hammer funny enough that could help wedge it up so I'm just using the chisel here and that's lovely it's fitting in nice to the top and nice to the left and that's when you know you're gonna get it screwed um, you should always try and keep a left hand on the wall or a knee or something just to hold it in place and I always screw it from the top to the bottom but it doesn't really matter you can screw it from the middle down and then middle up or bottom all the way up doesn't really matter terrible terrible deal um, I'm spacing my screws probably about five six inches apart as well and on every joist um, on a ceiling I would always try to go that wee bit more not, not too ma many screws as it's gonna damage the board but enough that you know it's given good support so if you over if you over screw it you're just damaging the board also so if you miss any screws if you miss the joist make sure and take that screw out because even if you're not doing the plaster and it can cause the plaster to pop and you know if you're doing this in your own house you want to make it as easy as possible for the plaster coming in to do it um, so you don't want you do not want any loose screws you also want to make sure the screws are all home and they're not sticking out too far but at the same time you don't want to drive them in too far that they bust the top layer of paper as then you're going to lose strength in that fixing and also you want to make sure you're plasterboarding the right side out this is white side out here and the reason it's white side out for this board is well, that's to make a board but where the paper folds around is now butted up against the joist in behind so when I come to plaster and that paper gets moist and damp with the, with the wet plaster I'm going to use it can't peel off as easy because it's also jammed in tight to the joist so try to get this a little bit of a close up here on the screw so that's get just a bit of an eyeball on this so you just know what kind of way to, to get your screws in but you want to just bring them just in no more that's too far so there's just slightly too far where it's slightly bust paper you don't want that that's that's what you don't want this is what you want here just in and no more so I've done one one above one above is actually okay but you don't need to take them out anymore but you want to make sure that they're in and in and, in and only in so nice next next part again you're gonna measure up I've decided to cut this board in half just to make life easier for myself but again just going to measure um, left to right and up and down for both boards to make sure you can get them fitted in and I've opted to put a joint on here just for easiness because carrying the full board up the stairs on my own was a bit awkward and I was afraid of knocking pictures off the walls and stuff and why, why make the job harder if you can lighten the board an area that won't matter so much I don't mind because I'm plastering this wall so it's just it's just gonna make me have to put an extra bit of scrim on it's no big deal whatsoever but um, here we are bottom boards in and screwed and time for the top board I actually see that I'm following my joists up again I have it marked at the top so I know that it's marked at the top 
I also have it marked on the floor, which I didn't show, but I used a bit of chalk to mark on the floor where the joists were running up the way as well. If you wanted to be really particular, you could, once you even do your marks top and bottom, if you put a screw top and bottom, you could run a straight line across a chalk line or a pencil line just between the two so that you know if you're finding problems hitting the joist, that you're hitting the joist every time. Um, so that's us all finished. The, the only problem I must say with the, the, the chalk line idea is if the joists aren't straight, if they're warped, you will find problems. But that's it all finished now. Um, make sure, quick check around, make sure there's no bounties, no screws not fully screwed in. Um, happy enough, this wall is ready for plastering. Bit of scrim tape and get it skimmed and it's gonna look lovely the next thing to do again guys is just clean up after yourselves uh, especially if you're not plastering it get it nice and clean for the plaster coming in behind you 